Okay, so now I've got a list of some proxy sources. I'm going to remove duplicate URLs. We end up with 1150. I'm going to export the URL list and I'll just call this proxy demo. And now I'm going to go to manage proxies, then harvest proxies. Here are some of my sources you can see already. And I'm going to add source from proxy demo. And that's how you add new sources. Now, when you're checking for proxies, make sure you um, hit this box up here, select everything. So all these sources will be checked for proxies. And what I like to do is uncheck all these sources because these are the built in sources and you can't delete or remove these. But everyone with scrape boxes is using these sources. So it's best to stay away rather than fighting with tens of thousands of people using these sources. We can start scraping, but what I also like to do is make sure this box is unchecked because if you have this box checked, then all the proxies you pull from these pages will overwrite the existing proxies you have. And I usually have a couple of hundred proxies that are still working in Scrapebox every time I redo this process. So I'm going to make sure that is unchecked. Then I can hit start. And this is going to take a while to run because there's about 1500 different sources in here. You can see that Scrapebox is checking these pages and finding proxies. So we could just say apply and then on the next page we'll get a massive list of proxies that we need to check and that's the last part of the process. But what I like to do is delete all the sources, all these sources where there were no proxies. I like to delete those because it takes time to check these so I'm building up a list of sources. What you can do is hit this column header here and this is actually a new feature that was released just before Christmas. That is a request that I made and I was uh, blown away with how quickly they implemented it. I think it was four days after I asked for it, the Scrapebox team, uh, they emailed me back and said they put it in. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, so these are my proxy sources. You get to a point where there's just one. And when there's only one on a page, that, that often means that it's just an example or, or maybe it's a bit of code that Scrapebox thinks is going to be a working proxy and most likely it won't you can bet your money on it being some stupid proxy that's never going to work. So I'm going to select all these like that and then remove. And now I'm left with all the sources that gave me 10 or more possible working proxies. And then what I also like to do is once I've done that is export all sources as a text file. So I keep a list of proxy sources. I'm going to save this as a new one because I also have finished scraping for all uh, of I've closed that down now. Let me load this up again. I found 750,000 different pages that have proxies on them using hrefer, so I need to go through the duplicates with that later. And the reason I'm telling you that is because when you're on here, you just need to add source once you've got a clean list of non-duplicate URLs. And then later on, I can build on the same list and then test them all again. And then any of the zeros or anything less than 10 or less than 20 if you want to do that then I can get rid of all of those as well and that means you've got a go-to list and then if you don't get a good number of proxies then you can always scrape for more targets using scrape box and also using the time search so if you search for anything that's been next in the last 24 hours then you'll make sure that you've always got a fresh list okay so I have 25 and a half thousand proxies that need checking but before I do that what I like to do is save this list so save these to a text list and I'm going to save this as proxies to sort. So now that I've saved those proxies, I'm going to open that list in Notepad++. If you don't know what Notepad++ is, it's like Microsoft Notepad, but a whole lot better. So if I open it up like this, then these are the 25,000 proxies that I've just found. But what I'm going to do is select everything and then you go to text FX and then sort lines insensitive and you can see that I've got a lot of dummy proxies. I don't know how much you know about proxies, but obviously these ones are never going to work. These are just examples, as I said before, where someone has uh, perhaps done a tutorial and what they've done is they've used fake proxy numbers just to illustrate a point. And if I go down, you can see there's a lot of these. And what I found is that you can delete everything before 100. All those proxies were not going to work anyway. So it means that when you're doing the proxy check, you're going to save a whole lot of time. So what I do is I find 100 and that means I've got 600 less proxies to test. And 
because of the way this is numbered, you're not actually missing any of the any of the important proxy numbers. But I've never seen one below a hundred work. And when I say below a hundred, I don't mean uh, any number below a hundred, like sixty or seventy, because this is sorted by the first number. So you can see it goes one, then ten, and then a hundred. So that's why I'm confident I can delete those. Sorry, that's a long explanation, but it will save you some time when you're testing proxies because it does take a while. You can hit save, close that, close that, load, proxies to sort. And when that's loaded, you can hit manage again, so you're opening the same screen as before. And now we've got almost 25,000 proxies to check. 